Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. In this video, I'm going to be building, or uh, I shouldn't say build because this isn't a build, it's basically a final assembly of the Avios Grand Tundra Plus. It's the latest version of the Grand Tundra. Looks like a great plane. The main thing that they have improved on is the uh, where the servo connection for the wing. Basically now it's a multi-pin plug-in and there's two uh, main uh, control or struts to uh, uh, you know solidify the wing. Um, other than that, the plane is pretty much as before. It shows you how good it was that all they needed to improve was uh, adding a, a plug-in connector. Um, it has metal geared servos, unlike a smaller version of it, which is the, uh, uh, the Durafly Tundra. Uh, they even include a second canopy. It has the primary canopy, which gives you the nice look of the plane. And it has a second canopy included with magnet where you can plug in a uh, two servo, um, uh, it's a gimbal basically and you mount a camera on it and then you, if you have a, uh, a gimbal controller for your headset you can do FPV uh, where you can move the camera up down left right uh, while it's mounted here on the plane and if you don't want to go that route you can simply mount a camera right here and just do a straight ahead camera FPV if you don't have the uh, motion track headset so uh, very nice that they include this item it does not include floats or skis, but both of those are available. The floats are available for about $40 from Hobby King. This is available at Hobby King right now. And uh, I certainly advise getting one if you can, uh, if you're interested in it, because they're gonna probably disappear pretty fast. I'd been waiting for this plane to come back around. I really wanted one when they were uh, the last iteration and I didn't have the uh, money at the time to pick one up and then when I did they were gone So I've had to wait uh, But it is now available again. It is available at their international as well as the uh, the US uh, warehouses for Hobby King so uh, And if you get it through the US warehouse if you're in the United States shipping region You're gonna get free shipping and you just can't beat that on uh, on a plane this big. It's uh, very nicely priced at $349.99, uh, flies on a 4S or a 6S. There's a lot more to tell you, but uh, if you're interested in the basic specs, you can go on their website, or you can go on my previous video where I do the unboxing and I talk a lot about the plane. But now we're gonna build it. So the first step is uh, not including this set of hinges right here, because this is the flap. This is, has a, a mechanical hinge, it's a nice, uh, barn door style, can go to a full 90 degree flap. Uh, these hinges right here, the first thing you need to do is exercise them a little bit. You wanna take any stiffness out of them. They recommend at least four to six times. As you can see, I'm doing a little more than that. But you just wanna do this on both wing ailerons and on the rudder and stabilizer. Better do it right away so you don't forget about it because if you don't loosen them up, you're gonna overstrain the servos. Uh, as I may have mentioned a moment ago, all the servos are metal gear servos, which is great. You don't have to worry about stripping out a servo. Um, so, you know, you're not gonna have a mid-flight failure of some type because you strip out an aileron servo and you're trying to do aerobatics or something like that and have a problem. Now, same thing with the stabilizer. I know this is kind of boring. Uh, as long as I'm doing this in front of you, I'll go ahead and tell you some things about this plane. Uh, as I mentioned, 4S or 6S, I'm gonna be using 6S's on it because I have them. And uh, I wanna be able to take advantage of the performance envelope. I may use a little tape on these at some point just to reinforce them a bit. The rudder is on a pin hinge. So there's hinge points here, here, and here, and it has connections for several things. One is just the connection to the servo to actuate it. Uh, there's a tail wheel uh, that bolts onto the fuselage uh, that is controlled by a pair of uh, spring actuators, and that's gonna connect here and here. And this slot here and these two holes are for 
an item that comes with the float kit. If you buy the floats, you get the, uh, the extra uh, mounting bracket at the rear, um, and you get a rudder that's on a, uh, a stick about this long so that it uh, dips into the water and uh, you can uh, help steer the airplane in the water uh, a little easier than you do just with the prop wash on the rudder. So that's very nice. And I believe the uh, speed control controller has a reverse setting so that uh, you can uh, back the plane up when you're in the water. At least uh, the, uh, the Avios or the, uh, the Duraflight Grand Tundra had that option. I'm, I'm not sure on this. I'll have to look that up for you. Um, there's a, uh, a slot right here um, that allows you to uh, basically, it's right where the center of gravity should be more or less and uh, where the uh, main wing strut goes through the fuselage. And uh, this is where you would hook a uh, tow line for a glider. Uh, that's something I definitely plan to do with this plane is uh, tow some of my uh, larger gliders up into the air and uh, you know, perhaps for uh, other flyers at the field who are so inclined to bring their gliders along. Now the thing about the 4S and 6S, um, I would swear that the boilerplate on the description says that uh, you have to buy the uh, 6S prop, which is a, a 16.8 versus a 17.8. You need a sh slightly shorter prop to run the 6S. Um, it, uh, it said it wasn't included, um, that you had to purchase it separately. It was included. Two props. One is shorter than the other. So that was a nice little bonus I wasn't expecting. And uh, having thought about it for a couple of seconds, uh, I'm, now that I've flexed these out a bit, I've got some, uh, not, I wouldn't say tearing, but the, it's definitely weakening the foam. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lay these out and put some foam, um, um, some uh, clear tape here and here to reinforce these hinges. So I'm gonna stop the video for just a moment and uh, go get the supplies for that. Okay, um, you could probably use a variety of different tapes for this from um, box tape, clear box tape to a, uh, a cellophane tape. This is an actual wing tape um, that uh, I got from one or another vendors. Um, so now the action is the way it should be as before, uh, but there is a line of tape here and here, and so there's no worry that these are going to come off in flight. And I would highly recommend doing this. In fact, you know, you have to do this because um, I was already getting mine split from the, uh, the number of times I had actuated it. And even if you did it only once or twice, um, you know, because I remember I did it a few more than four or five times, uh, it's still going to come off at some point. It's still going to fatigue and break away. And that will cause your beautiful plane to crash in a most spectacular fashion in a way that you have no control over. And there's nothing more frustrating than that, seeing a plane come apart in the air. So definitely do that. Um, you do not need to do anything to the rudder. You do not need to do anything to the flaps because the flaps are hinged. Um, I would check the gluing on the hinges. Um, maybe do a little extra glue just to make sure. Um, you could take a screwdriver and give a little pry, make sure they're not loose. Um, one of mine was a little loose and I just squeezed it in back into the foam, but I'm gonna go back over those with uh, a little bit of glue and just make sure they are solid. Um, note that you can get these hinges as a separate item. You can, because uh, it's a very specific hinge, so if you ever damaged one, if it ever broke in a crash, uh, you can buy the hinge set for both sides for about uh, four or five dollars. I actually ordered a set um, just to have on hand. That's one of those spare parts that they'll have in stock for a while and then they'll be bought out and then there won't be any more of them. I got a few bubbles in my tape over here. I'll take a pin and prick those. But basically, uh, the ailerons, what I did was instead of going the whole length of the hinge as I did with the stabilizers, because this is such a long surface and it really doesn't need total reinforcement. Um, I just took a piece of tape starting about here, ran it to the edge, down into here, make sure that you 
don't have uh, like the ta tape isn't gapping you just want to run it all the way down use like uh, the tip of your finger or um, a small tool to push the tape down uh, up the other side and uh, down to about here I did another strip here and another strip here the reason I did those locations is because they are on the decals the decals are going to provide a really good surface even stronger than just putting it directly on the foam and over here there is paint on the wing which makes for a strong surface as well as partially it's kind of overlapping the the paint and the uh, the decal and then do the same thing on the top so both sides one two three that would be what you would normally have if you were using plastic hinges on this plane would be you know three at you know four at most but certainly you would have three hinge points and so this is going to be just fine there's no splitting visible here anyway um, these might last forever uh, with just the foam but this way they will not fall off on you so absolutely take this step do not miss this and definitely don't miss it on the horizontal stabilizer so now it's time to start building or assembling I have the, uh, the directions here on my iPad. Uh, they are not included in the kit. There's no printed directions. So uh, go onto the website and download the file. It's a PDF, so you should be able to view it on just about any device in a browser. I'm just using this little plane stand to help me work. And I'm getting out a little paper plate to open up this bag and lay parts out on it so I am good to go now if there's any spares I highly advise you keep them because um, you never know what you might need down the road uh, this piece of foam here uh, goes right here and what that is for is if you buy the optional candy dropper uh, it's a little uh, black box about uh, about that big about so tall it's got a pair of doors like little Bombay doors uh, it's got a single servo actuator in it and uh, you run the wire through here this provides a flat mounting surface uh, there's a plywood brace uh, piece of wood behind here uh, to provide structural strength for it and uh, then you can you know fill it with candy or put a little guy with a parachute on it or whatever you want to do whatever you want to drop over your field or you know pretend bombing runs whatever um, those run about uh, I think they're $25 and uh, they at this moment they are available through the uh, US website I thought about getting one just for kicks and it's like you know there's other things I'd rather do with this and other things I'd rather spend the money on I don't not that enthralled with the idea of doing bomb runs, but whatever. Um, it actually would be a lot more fun with an FPV camera, because you know, then you could kind of, you know, do a dive bombing run. You could see your target and uh, see what kind of accuracy you can get. All things to consider. I mentioned in the uh, unboxing video how sturdy this gear is. And it really is quite impressive. Uh, you know, it's either brazed or uh, welded together, uh, steel rods. And these hinged items here, those are going to mount to the fuselage. And so there is the, the movable arm and uh, you know nicely painted uh, threaded uh, uh, thing for the bolt so you don't have to worry about little grub screws um, hopefully they use a nylon lock nut here or a plastic nut we'll we'll see um, and uh, uh, these are the uh, part where the spring connectors are gonna are gonna go to so um, let's start with that assembly so yeah here we go see these tubes right here are going to be uh, telescoping on each other gonna definitely want to make sure these are loose 
I'm going to, uh, you know what, I'm going to pause for a moment and I'm going to go get a little bit of uh, black grease from my car supplies and uh, make sure that this moves smoothly and uh, doesn't rust anywhere that it, uh, it might wear. Um, but so the telescoping effect combined with rubber bands attached to these hooks is going to provide the spring action and as you can see it is a little tight so yeah I'm going to pause I'm going to go get grease I'll be right back. I hope you were able to see what I was doing earlier. If not, I'll reshoot. Um, so there's one side that moves nice and smooth. That one moves nice and smooth. One of these was a, seemed like it was a little tight. Yeah, this one. Just gonna have to work that a little bit. There may be a little paint may have dripped down there. Seems to be loosening up. If that becomes an issue, if it, uh, if it continues to be sticky, uh, I may uh, ream that out a little bit one way or another. Anyway, um, this is some high pressure black grease. It's a, a Loci a TLR item uh, for my car racing days. I do tend to keep a lot of stuff, but it almost always seems to come in handy somewhere down the road. going to make things be much more smooth and it'll prevent that from ever rusting or at least help prevent it from rusting everything is possible and then coat the rod separately doesn't take much I'm not trying to turn this into a damper just trying to uh, to get a nice coat on there. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, great. So I'll need to keep an eye on that one. I'm gonna keep that black grease handy in case it, uh, I need something else. I think I will, but I might want to put a drop or so on the axles for the wheels. So, well, I'm going to start with this bag for the wheels, and uh, those are one nice thing about the kit is that they do tell you the size of each part. A lot of kits do that anyway, but not all do. Never. To, uh, a lot of them will have the pictures so that you can, you know, hold the screw against the picture and compare. Of course, that's not going to work if you don't have a printed copy. So, okay, I see what they're meaning. Okay. Um, this should be easy enough to uh, figure out when you look at it. There are four screws needed, um, uh, three by 14 and three by 10 millimeter. Um, the two rear mount points on both sides, so that's four, are three by 10. The inner front one on each side is a three by 10, and the outer front one on each side is a three by 14. So two three by 14s for the front outers. And the kit even comes with a little screwdriver. I have my own of course, but uh, there's may do just fine. May give you a little Allen key. I'm not sure what that is needed for, but I'm sure it'll come up along the way. They are nice enough to label the bags so uh, we know where our 3x10s and our 3x14s are. That's interesting. Those are 
body clips, like for a car. I have no idea where those are going to be used on the kit, uh, but we'll find out. So, I need two 3x14s. And another thing about um, these kits, they usually will have a few extra screws. So if you get to the end of the kit and there's a few extra screws, don't be concerned that you may have left something out. It's far more likely they just gave you a couple of spares. So I'm going to pull out the two 3x14s and leave the third in in case that is for something else. And if it's a spare, I'll have it at the end. Okay, those are 3x10. Uh, and you want to make sure you're using the right ones because there's 3x10 that are a, a bolt that would thread into a nut and then there's 3x10s that are self-tapping screws that would screw into wood or untapped plastic. And these, what we need here is the bolts uh, because this plastic piece right here uh, where the landing gear attaches, that piece, oh wait a minute, I know what the body clips are for. The body clips are for the wing struts and nicely, the wing struts, there's this metal peg here and there's a hole. So that's going to be where for two of the, uh, the pins right here, and I'm sure there are metal plugs or pins on the wing as well. That's going to make uh, assembly and disassembly at the field quite easy because you just pull out a couple of plastic body pins and uh, your struts come off. You don't have to bolt them in and out. Um, these, uh, these holes, hopefully we'll be able to see here, uh, if you look carefully, you might be able to see that there's metal behind each of those holes. So they have either sunk uh, bolts into the plastic from behind or there's a threaded plate. Uh, either way, there is a metal threaded surface back there. So this landing gear is not going to tear off easily. And this plastic panel is available as a spare. You can get this for about $5. I think I ordered one of these too. Um, you know, call me crazy. I do tend to order stuff like that when I buy a nice plane like this that I'm really hoping is going to run the distance. Uh, you know, if there's a few items I can, you know, get for an extra 10 or 20 bucks that are going to increase the longevity of the airplane, I, I definitely try to pick them up. So let's see. Which direction do we Let me hang on. Is it this way? Or is it this way? I think it's this way. Yeah, otherwise it would be like a trailing arm. Now, the next question is... Okay, I guess it just overlaps. There must be... Um, the reason there's this extra plastic thing is... He, uh, there's a... Okay, let me just try to show you. You see how there's this, these uh, three holes here, this triangle of holes, um, and there's this dip here. Uh, when you use floats, you're not gonna be using the spring arms. And just like you have back here, there's gonna be a, 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 a wire arm that inserts down into here, kind of like an egg shape. And uh, in, then there'll be a, uh, uh, metal or a plastic tab that's going to come across these two holes to lock it in place. Uh, when you're using this landing gear, you just have the, um, it just overlaps that unneeded hole, which isn't needed right now because we're not using the, uh, the boat flaps. So I'm going to go ahead and get this screw started. I'm not going to crank it down tight, just going to get it started to hold that in place. This side, and then I will get the other screws. That was for the 3x10s. Now, so this is the 3x14, and that's why the longer screw is needed here, uh, because of that uh, plastic uh, divot for the uh, second type of landing gear. Having that extra screw length uh, gives you a lot of extra strength there. Okay. Airplane 
stand is not as handy as I would have hoped, but it's probably better than trying to just do it as it will on the loose. So. Screws are a little tight, um, which is good from a point of view that they're not going to come unscrewed. Um, it's probably because you're having to tap them through a little bit of plastic uh, where they get close to the, uh, the blind nut space. I wish this was slightly bigger screwdriver. I need to go get one from upstairs, but. It's a cheap screwdriver, it's rounding out already. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get another one. I'll be right back. Sorry I keep having to run off for uh, tools. I'm uh, a little backed up upstairs. Uh, my main work table, I am assembling the, uh, the fresh glider, two meter glider. And on another, the only other table surface I have to work on, I am in the middle of assembling my new 1.8 GT car. So I am down here, also because of the size of the plane. easier to do with a bigger screwdriver.
pieces. I'm going to put a little more grease on there. I'm just doing this kind of just loosely um, so that, that is, these pieces are held together while I do this assembly. I'll figure out the proper way to tension those rubber bands later. I just want things to stay together for right now. Here. And those are three by ten, no, two by ten bolts. So the so where are the two by tens? There's two point three by ten. if it's these two Allen heads down here. They provide a third, which I assume is the a spare again. So let's see if that thread's in there. Yeah, that looks like it's it. And is there any bushing or anything? Doesn't appear to be kind of interesting they provide a couple of uh, little bushings and it looks like one of those would fit in that space quite nicely let me just look ahead in the instructions see if there's any other use for those because those were in the pack with the uh, the nylon wheel nuts and these two and a halves I'm going to go ahead and use them. It just looks like fuel tubing, I think. Come up with another piece. I guess the question is, do I want it in the front or the back? Looks like behind is better. Um, so, that's going to be fun. I need a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay. Um, needle nose pliers to uh, help get that bushing into place. Of course, I need to get this arm back down there.
Okay, so that went right through. And there are some very small nylon lock nuts, and that's very nice that they provided lock nuts. lock nut with the needle nose pliers and get it started. Sorry you're not getting a good view of this. Okay, it doesn't have to be very, very tight uh, because you don't want to compress this anyway. And um, once the bolt is uh, protrudes through the lock nut, you're nice and safe. So now it's time to do the other one. And uh, you know, as I was mentioning with spares, they provide three of everything here. So you have an extra uh, little lock nut, you've got an extra bushing, you've got an extra two millimeter bolt. And uh, they even give you three uh, of the bolts, nylon lock nuts for the axles. So if you lose one at the field, drop it in the grass or whatever, um, you've got one spare. So the, how I did this was just get the bolt through there and onto this arm and then work the uh, bushing into place. And then, there we go. So now the lock nut. Snug. Done. And there is our springy landing gear. Now, of course, this is going to have to be tighter, but uh, we'll deal with that down the road. Since this is a basically nylon, I don't think I'm going to put any grease on there. It's not going to get that much uh, friction or wear.
play there. Smooth enough action. And ah uh, yes. Wearing in time on their own. It's a little snug, but not a problem. Wheel number two is on, so we have landing gear. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel.